Hello, welcome to Shad Life. I'm really curious about what happens to the head angle of a bike when the suspension compresses. And I want to compare a full suspension bike to a hardtail. I think I already know what's going to happen just because I make a lot of assumptions. And my biggest question is with a full suspension bike, does the head angle stay the same? Does it get steeper or does it get mellower? And we'll go ahead and use these tools. I have a degree measuring tool and a shock pump so I can let all the air out because that's what's going to allow this to compress. Um, and we'll go ahead and do these measurements. Um, one caveat here is that this isn't a perfectly level surface, right? Um, but it doesn't matter because all we're going to do is compare the change from where it's at here to where it is when it's compressed. This measurement, like if I do it right now, isn't going to be accurate to what the actual head angle is when I'm riding this bike. Well, that's pretty close actually <laughs> because the front tire is like literally like a few millimeters off the ground when it's in the stand. But it still came to almost 66 degrees, which I know this bike is. So it'll be close. So let's go ahead and do this. So as I already showed, but we'll just do it again because now I'm doing this more officially, we're going to look at the head angle when the bike with the suspension is fully uh, extended. So this is 65.5 degrees, right? Um, so this bike's typically a, a 66 degree head angle, so that little bit of rise of the front tire must be slacking at about a half a degree. So um, there you go. So now we know it's 65.5. I'm going to let all the air out of both shocks with the shock pump, and then we're going to measure again and see what happens. OK, I should have measured on the fork leg. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty much the same because <laughs> I didn't realize. Now I don't have any more room to measure there. but. I, I think it'll be pretty much the same. So let's, uh, I think I'm going to sit on the bike just to get it all the way down, <laughs> right? So we just landed off of a big old drop or something and the suspension compressed all the way. And let's get it all the way down. What do we got? 64.5 we're just going to say 64.5 so we lost one degree of head tube angle when the suspension is fully compressed i thought it would be more than that and i was assuming that it was going to go get steeper so i was correct there but i thought it was going to get a lot steeper but it only is one degree steeper which Really, yes, that can affect the handling of the bike, but not as bad as I expected it to. So that's interesting. So cool. Um, I'll go ahead and put air back in this because I need to anyway if I want to ride it. <laughs> and then uh, we'll measure at the leg again just to have more consistency uh, when I redo it. So OK, air is back in. I just want to check this again. Get it. Okay. 65.2. Is it really that different? It is. That is so weird. Like, why is it different? 65.2. I mean, we're talking <laughs> a couple tenths of a degree different. It's very weird, but yeah, we're just going to say a roughly one degree difference when you go to full compression, just to make numbers easier. I would say probably maybe just a hair less, like maybe 0 0.8 degrees difference, right? Um, so I want to talk about this a little bit, and then we'll go look at the hardtail. So on a full suspension bike, and I'm assuming that with more travel, and it's also going to depend on how the linkage is designed back here. Like, does the bike kind of 
crunch like this in the middle or is the linkage designed so it more goes straight down so every brands is probably gonna be a little different and my guess is is they do their best to try to minimize geometry changes as the suspension compresses so if you land off of a drop or you compress into a berm or something like that you're actually going to get naturally a little bit slacker head angle to some degree right where that isn't going to happen is under braking so if you're coming into a turn, you know, it's going to change. Your geometry is going to change and probably more ideally for how you're going to ride, right? If you come into a turn and you start heavy braking or anywhere else and you're heavy braking, you're going to actually steepen the head angle because you're going to compress the fork and not compress the rear at the same time. So under braking load, stuff like that, you're actually going to have a steeper head angle. Um, but in all other scenarios where you're equally compressing front and rear suspension is like what you want in a turn or something, you're actually going to get a little bit slacker head angle and that's going to, you know, make the bike, you know, at higher speeds corner better, right? Um, and so on and so forth. So, um, full suspension is just, you know, a little different in that sense. Um, but a hardtail, now that's going to behave differently, and I think we already know what's going to happen with a hardtail. So let's compare it and talk about that. Okay, so now I have the new Proof Scout hardtail here, right? So we want to see what the initial head angle is on this bike. And, uh, I haven't fixed this cable, so that's going to make it. Well, let's measure down here. We know the better to know <laughs> to measure down here anyway, right? All right. So make sure that groove is on there. 64.2 degree head angle. 64.3, 64.2. Which one is it, guy? Now it's going to 64.1. Wow. Jumping all over the place. Okay, 64.4. <laughs> We're going with that number. 64.4 um, when the suspension is fully extended. And I'm going to let the air out of the fork and we'll see what it is like afterwards. Okay, this one will be easier because I can just push my hand down on it and push it all the way down. And then we'll go and look. Seventy point seven. <laughs> Seventy point seven degrees. So that is a change of about four degrees of head angle. And it went steeper. So I think logically we all should know that it's gonna get steeper because there's nothing going on back here and the front end is diving. So as the front end dives, it steepens the head angle. But I didn't realize it would go four degrees steeper. Now, um, with uh, the consideration of landing really hard off of a jump or something or landing really hard, you're going to compress the fork, right? And that's just kind of temporary, and then you're going to come back up. Not a huge deal, but you do have to think that could, you know, 70, you know, 70 and a half degrees roughly, right? that's going to be pretty twitchy. So those moments when you're landing really hard off of something, if you're not in full control, it could eat more easily get squirrely on you versus a full suspension bike. When you land, it gets slacker. That's going to stabilize the bike more. So um, very interesting to think about it that way. Um, if we think about going into corners, you're not going to fully <laughs> compress your fork going into corners, but... If you're going into corners and you're pressing in to the berm or something, right, you will probably change your head tube angle, steepen it by a degree or so on a hardtail. Probably not so much on a full suspension bike. You might change it by a quarter or a, a half of the degree at the most. But on a hardtail, you probably could change it 
a degree or even more, and it's going in the opposite direction than you technically really would want it to. That might explain why some of these more aggressive hardtails do have a little bit slacker head angle because when you get on it, you know, if you're measuring the geometry without sag and it's a, you know, 63 degree head angle, let's think one of the more extreme hardtails or some out there that are uh, really steep like that or slack like that. But uh, if once you get on the bike, it probably goes to 64, right? And in this case, where it's 65, when I get on the bike, it probably goes closer to 66, just with the initial, you know, 30% or so sag that you usually set a bike up with. So keep that stuff in mind. Your geometry changes when your suspension compresses. And I think a lot of people don't really think about that. And most bike companies, I've seen some, that will show you the geometry at SAG. I know uh, Esker does that, um, or they'll give you both measurements. But a lot of bike companies give you the geometry when not at SAG. Um, so it's very interesting. Uh, now think of a fully rigid bike, like my low side or my BMX bikes or things like that, right? the geometry doesn't change because there's no suspension to alter the geometry. It's always the same. So then you can just set up the geometry for ideal uh, situations. But where the geometry is going to change at SAG or where it's going to change when, when riding and doing certain things, manufacturers have to account for that in how they want the bike to ride and respond. So it's a very interesting. Um, I knew this would get steeper. I did not know it would get four degrees steeper, roughly, right? Um, that's a lot. So if you're riding a hardtail and you're landing hard off of something, if you're a little squirrely already, like as you go off, like a drop or going over a jump or something, and you land, the steeper your head angle is going to steepen and make your bike less stable. It's really something to think about. So make sure, you know, I've always said uh, you can do pretty much anything on a hardtail, but you do have to have more skill. You do have to know how to ride a bike and have more skill. And if you're riding in really rough terrain, a lot fast downhills, things like that, on a hardtail or on a full suspension, but or mostly a hardtail, you actually do want a more aggressive hardtail with a slacker head angle and things like that. Not ideal for a lot of like the, the type of trails we ride here in Minnesota, but definitely like out west in the mountains, things like that. The slacker head angle comes into play and you will have a more stable bike because of it. So in conclusion, a hardtail, the head angle is going to get steeper when you compress the suspension by quite a bit actually, <laughs> quite drastic, right? Um, and a full suspension bike under compression, so when both the rear and front are compressing, that's important, right? Because there are times when only the front will compress like under heavy braking and stuff like that. But when they're both compressed, it's actually gonna get slacker, but not by much, at least not with the Salsa Rustler. And I think different manufacturers, the way they do their rear linkage is going to vary on how much that head angle changes. And that's probably one of the reasons why some of these rear suspensions get pretty complex, right? So slacker with a full suspension bike when both are compressed, steeper with a hardtail when the fork compresses. Pretty interesting to know this stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, now uh, it's answered my question, and I was actually correct in what I was thinking. I was thinking full suspension, it would get slacker, and hardtail, it would get steeper. What I didn't know is full suspension, it doesn't change that much. We're talking one degree of change, right? On the Rustler, anyway. On this bike, we're talking four degrees going steeper, four degrees of change. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a big difference. So there you have it. I really do appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.